this exercise, we are going to write a program that again um, kind of simulates something that we use often, or some of you probably use often, and that is Google Translate. So just to demonstrate how it works, so let me bring it up. So Google Translate has this interface. It gives you two um, input uh, fields where you can provide words, and it gives you two lists, which are similar to combo boxes in C Sharp, where you can select um, the languages that you want to translate between. So suppose I say English and Zulu, and I type in the word warm, it will give me um, the Zulu equivalent for warm. So how this works, um, if I have nothing there and I start typing, the f every time I type a letter, it immediately gives me something. Okay, so it still hasn't found a Zulu word for the English wa, then war. Okay, so now war is empty, but if I add an M, it gives me the word for warm. The way we program, if we had to do this, we would have two input fields or an input field and an output field so we will put in the word that we want to translate then we'll probably click on a translate button and then the word will come up in this case while we are typing the word comes up so it means there's an event handler attached to this input field so every time i type a letter that event handler is triggered to go and search in the database if there's a word so if i get to WAR, it finds the word war and it gives me impi. But I'm not interested in the word war, I want the word warm. So if I type M, it goes search again. So this event handler will be something like the C sharp text changed event. Um, so if we have a text box and we type in it, every time we type something, the text changed event is triggered. So if we go put something in that event handler, we will have our program do something while we are typing. Okay, so we are going to do something similar, but we're not going to use the text changed. We're just going to use a translate button on our interface. So to keep it simple, we are going to write a translator that can translate only two words, um, warm and cold, and we're only going to translate from English to Zulu. Right, so I'm going to add um, a translate button and I am going to have two text boxes. I have a text box for the word that I want to translate. And now I can have either a text box or a label for the translated word. In this case, I'm just going to select, I'm going to use a text box, but Obviously, we're going to enter the word that we want to translate in the top text box. Then we're going to click on translate, and then the translated word is going to appear here. We don't want the user to make any changes to the word that has been translated. So to prevent that, we can just um, set that text box enabled property to false. Okay, but we have to change its name still. So this is text new word, okay, that one is called text, um, say, my word, then the button is a translate button, so we say button translate, and the last thing is just to change the form's text, and we call it my translate. Okay, so as I said, we're just going to translate from English to Zulu, and for now, our vocabulary consists of exactly two words, warm and cold. Okay, I still haven't changed the text on the button, so we just call that translate. Okay, right, so just to show you, if we run the program, I'm going to type the word warm in there and then I'm going to click on translate and then 
the word Zulu word for warm, Kafutumele will appear there. So our programming is going to take place in the buttons event handler. So I'm going to the click event handler. Okay, so we have two words here. Um, the word that we want to translate and the word that we're going to translate it to. So, and because these are words, not numbers, I'm going to declare two string variables. String my word and then new word. So you see that I can declare two variables in one line. I just separate the two words with a comma, not a semicolon there. Okay, so those are my variables. Now I'm going to assign to my word the word that the user put in the text my word text box. Then I have to do some processing, and in the end, I'm going to put in the output part, I'm just going to write here, display output. Okay. In the output part, I will say something like text um, new word dot text is equal to, and then new word. So this is, we assume here that in the processing that we've done over here, which involved doing the translation, we've assigned a value to new world, which is the Zulu form of the English word that has been presented. Okay, so we've got my word. Now, we can use an if statement to say if, remember the condition always comes in brackets, we say if my word is equal to wall. Okay. If my word is equal to, so this is the comparison operator to check if something is equal. If my word is equal to wall, then I am going to say the new word is equal to Okay. And note now we only have one equal sign. So there we have two equal signs. This is because it's part of a condition. We are checking, is this one equal to that one? In this case, we have an assignment statement. So we're saying the right-hand side must be placed into the variable on the left-hand side. Okay. So if the word is not warm, we can say else, and then we say new word is equal to or cold. Because we only have two words in our vocabulary, if the word is not warm, it must be cold. Okay. So we've now got an if statement that checks if the word warm. If it's warm, we make the new word of Hudumele. If it's cold, we make it from Akaza. To display this new word, we place it then in the text new words text property. Okay, so if I run the program, okay, I can now type in warm and click translate and it gives me the right word. I can't change this because I've made it, um, I disabled this um, text box. If I type in cold, okay, it translates it to Amakaza. But if I type in something like hello, it stays Amakaza. Let's run the program again so that we start with a clean form. If I type cold, okay, if, let's just type something else first. Um, say hello. It still types Amakaza or cold. 
Okay. If I type warm, it changes it to Akuntumele, which is correct. What is going on here? Okay. So we have an if statement that checks if my word is warm, then it gives us the word for warm. In all other cases, in other words, not only when the word is cold, doesn't matter what we put in, it will go do the else part. And then it will always say that the new word is our casa. Okay, so that's why if we type in a word like hello or peanut or whatever, it will always give us back our casa. So how do we change our if statement so that that doesn't happen? We have to use an else if instead of an else. So we say else if my word is equal to cold. So only if my word is equal to cold will we do this. In all other cases, we will we will not know the word because remember our um, language only consists of these two words. So now we're going to say message box show and we are going to display a message which says, which says sorry I don't know that word. Okay. Okay, just to recap about the message box, the message box always has message box dot show and then directly in brackets. There is no equal sign there. That is wrong. In the test we saw that say some of you did that. Okay, so message box dot show just gives in brackets the text that you want to appear in the message box. Okay, so now it says there are bold errors. Okay, and we can see this word is underlined. And if we read that message, it says use of unassigned local variable new word. It says we haven't given a value to the variable new world. Ach, new world, new word. But we have. There we do, and there we do. The problem is that if we type in any word that is not warm or cold, it will go to the else part and none of, neither of those two assignment statements will be executed. So, in effect, new word will not um, get a value. So, to get around that, we're just going to say equal there when we declare the new word um, variable, we just initialize it to the empty string. Okay. So this will solve that problem. So if we run the program now, okay, we can now type in warm and translate it. We can type in cold and this should give the right word. And now if we type in anything else, it will say, sorry, I don't know that word. There's one problem still. So if I type warm and I translate it, it works correctly. If I type cold, but if I type it in capitals and I translate, it says, sorry, I don't know that word. Okay. And this just shows you how, well, you can almost say how dumb a computer is. Because it doesn't know that the lowercase warm and the lowercase cold is the same word as the uppercase and warm and the uppercase cold. So we have to specifically go and include in this condition my word equals warm. Right. Okay, so now we're saying if my word is equal to the small letter warm or my word is equal to the capital letter uh, warm, then it must give us that word. Else, if it is equal to cold in small letters or cold in capital letters, it must still give us that word. Right, and I think we have now covered everything. If I say 
wrong. If I say code, if I say wrong in capitals, and if I say code in small letters, and if I type in any nonsense, say sorry, I don't know that word. So we've now completed the whole program.